Hi, I'm Chad, pastor here at Henderson General Baptist Church, and I wanted to take a moment to thank you for taking the time to watch this message given here at HGBC on Sunday morning. I also wanted to take a moment to let you know that if you are in the Henderson area and you do not regularly attend a church, then I want to personally invite you to join us this Sunday from 1030 to 1130. And don't forget, if this message makes a connection with you, then don't forget to like it, to share it, to, to comment on it, and let other people see it too. And then lastly, don't forget ever that Jesus has a purpose and a plan for your life. And that no matter the circumstances this life is throwing your way, Jesus loves you. May God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you on Sunday mornings from 1030 to 1130 here at Henderson General Baptist Church. There's no greater need in our lives than Jesus. How we need him for every facet of life. That oftentimes we try to do things on our own, we try to figure things out and do them our way, uh, get frustrated with other people when they don't do it your way, and oftentimes think there's only one way to do a certain thing that's your way, and we start moving into that thing of, but Jesus has a plan. And for us over this month, we've been talking about and thinking about and hopefully pondered upon a couple of questions each week and the idea of demonstrating authentic integrity, not something that you tell someone like, for instance, when someone is standing there and you say, hey, I'll pray for you. And then you walk away and you've said the words, I'll pray. But did you actually pray? See, this authentic integrity of saying, take the moment and do something. Over the last few weeks, we've talked about uh, from 2 Peter that God gives what is needed for the godly life. That character must be developed. That you're just not going to arrive because you've accepted Jesus Christ and all of a sudden everything's going to be easy. Don't be short-sighted. Don't forget. Last week, we talked about the question, what, where, or in whom do you find your comfort in and through the circumstances this life throws your way? Where you find your comfort is an indicator as to who you are serving because that's who you look to. That is the thing you look to. That's where you go to and wherever you find your comfort, you will go above and beyond to make sure to show praise and honor towards that thing. For us this week, I want you to know there is a choice. <clears throat> There's always been a choice. There will always be a choice. As I stand before you, life is filled with choices. And every single one of us make choices on a daily basis. And this decision-making process of making those choices come to, am I going to live out the godly life? Am I going to live out the selfish life? Am I going to live out the devil life? What is it that I'm going to choose today to determine who I'm going to be tomorrow? The Bible tells us, and just briefly, in 2 Peter, by, this, by His divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all this by coming to know Him, the one who called us to Himself by means of His marvelous and glory, marvelous glory and excellence. And because of His glory and excellence, because of His glory and excellence, it is because of His glory and excellence. He has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share His divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all of this, make every effort to respond 
to God's promises. Supplement your faith with moral excellence, knowledge, self-control, patient endurance, godliness, brotherly affection, love for all. The more you grow, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop. See, this is the choice. It is a choice as to whether or not I'm going to add all these things to my faith. It's a choice whether or not I'm going to trust in the, the, the promises God has given. It's a choice if I'm going to respond to those promises. It's a choice if I want to grow in the knowledge of who Jesus is and what he means to me. But those who choose unwisely to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their own old sins. So dear brothers and sisters, work hard. It's a choice. You have a choice today to work hard at developing the character of living out the life that God has given you, to live out the life not short-sighted, but God-fearing and God-honoring every day. Work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, there's a choice. And there's a choice laid out for each and every one of us on a daily basis. Every day that you're able to get up and you're still breathing, you have a choice. There are multiple choices. All you have to do is go into our food pantry and you get to make choices every day. That when you look around the world, those are choices that not everybody is privileged to have. You know, the kind of privileges that we open up the cabinet, we open up the refrigerator and say, I have nothing to eat. When we open up the closet door and you say, I have nothing to wear. And you have to step over shoes to get to the shoes that you can't find. And you say, I have no shoes for my feet. See, those are choices that not everybody gets to make. But there are choices that no matter where you live, no matter what you're doing, no matter what your race, your creed, no matter what nationality you are, no matter if you're a woman or a man, you get to make these decisions on a daily basis. See, the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 20, now listen, today I am giving you a choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to keep his commands, decrees, and regulations by walking in his way if you do this. The choice. That if is huge because we get to make that decision. Who are we going to serve? What are we going to do? If you do this, the Bible says, you will live and multiply in the land and the Lord your God will bless you and the land you are about to enter and occupy. See, those people in that day had a choice. To serve God to go into the promised land, to do what God had called them to do, to be who God had called them to be. I mean, when God is talking directly to us, when God is talking directly to you, you make the statements, well, then I would listen. If I heard God audibly speak to me, I would do what he said. Really? Would you? See, in my house, there's eight of us, so no matter what is said, there's always going to be a question that comes up every time by one of the eight. Why? Why? I am sending forth the new creed and regulation within this household. But why? 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 You didn't say that. 
that yesterday? Is that not how we treat God? When his word clearly states something in it for us to do, we want to have a committee meeting with the angels, with our family, and then bring it before God as to why can't we do it this way, God? See, we have choices. And oftentimes we think in our decision-making process, when I choose not to do anything, then therefore I can't be wrong. But that's an inaccurate statement. When you don't choose God, you have chosen Satan. Inactivity does not mean that I'm doing nothing wrong. It means you're doing nothing for God. There's a choice. See, the choices have started from long ago. Think about Adam and Eve. Maybe this week you open up chapter 3 and you start seeing Adam and Eve. And you maybe, you maybe you know the story really, really well. Maybe you don't know the story at all. But you see Adam and Eve and Adam has been made and he's went through and named off all the animals and here Eve is in the garden, and at this point in chapter 3, when you first started, it will always say Adam and the woman, because they were one. There was no separation. There was no une un unequally yoked. They were together. It wasn't until time for them to sin and made the wrong choice. Then all of a sudden the woman becomes Eve and she's named and now they have this anxiety that gets put into the situation. But the choice was simple. Eat anything in this garden but from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I promise you this. It's not in the Bible, but I certainly believe it with all of my heart. When God told Adam, do not eat from the tree of knowledge, good and evil, in the middle of the garden, Adam goes, which one is that exactly? Where is it? And you go, well, maybe if he said that, he was wanting to stay away from it. You knew anyone with children knows that when you say don't, that sends them down the path of going, I can sneak around and they'll never see me. My dad, the first time he let me on the snapper lawnmower, I'll never forget it. Chad, it's a privilege to get to ride this mower and mow the grass. That's what my dad told me. He was lying. Wasn't a privilege to ride that lawnmower. And I remember he said, Chad, when you do it, put it only in first gear. Now, some of you don't know what a snapper lawnmower is. It's not these zero turn radius things. You know, it had this thing and the little gear level, gear, gear lever here, and it would go from first to fifth. But I was only allowed in first until I got around to the back side of the shed where my daddy couldn't see me. Fifth gear. Get to the edge, back in first where he can see me. It wasn't until I become an adult that I realized, you know, my dad knew that it took me two minutes to get from one end of the shed to the other on this side of the shed. But on that side of the shed, I was making it in less than 15 seconds. Okay? Pretty much it tells him that I was not going in first gear. What's the point? The point is this. We all get to make choices. The choice of eating of that fruit. Why? Because they wanted knowledge of good and evil. And you go, isn't that a good thing? Isn't it a good thing to have knowledge of good and evil so that way I can choose the right things? Well, it sounds good in theory until you start realizing what they had before they ate. What they had before they ate was no decision-making process. They looked to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. They looked to the Heavenly Father and whatever He said, they did. There was no decision to be made. 
The decision was, I trust Him to do what is right. And I follow Him. But now all of a sudden, we get this idea of, well, I can choose between good and evil. And I can make the right choices. How's that working out for the world so far? I mean, when you look at it, our ability to make the decision based on what I choose is not going to work out too well most of the time. And yet here this choice was. What about the choice with Esau and Jacob? For most of us who've been in church all of our life, when we say the story of Esau and Jacob, we never say the story of Esau and Jacob. We always say the story of Jacob and Esau. We always put Jacob first. But what we failed to realize was there was a choice made that day. See, in the Old Testament, when you had a firstborn son, he was, in a sense, the most important. When you looked at the birthright and and honoring that child, he got a bigger portion of the family heritage and Esau was born first and he had been out and he had been hunting and he come in and he was really, really hungry. And his brother's like, hey dude, I'm cooking some bread and lentils and some, and some stew. And his brother looked at him and goes, man, can I have some of that? And his other brother goes, I'll give you a bowl of stew and some, and some bread, but you got to give me your birthright. Now, I don't know how good of a cook Jacob was. And I've eaten at a lot of nicer places over the years and eaten a lot of good food. But to give up my birthright? And Esau made the choice to say, well, I'm going to die anyway. I give you my birthright. He made the choice to give up his birthright as a child of that family to make sure that he had a bowl of stew. In our minds, we go, that's not a wise choice. But it's a choice that he made nonetheless. See, for us today, we all get to choose. One of the greatest choices you have every single day when you wake up is your attitude. It's something I've been saying for a while and I put here because attitude reflects character. How I view life is dependent upon how I see life. How I see life is going to determine my attitude towards it. When I start looking at God and my attitude towards Him, it's going to reflect who I am. It's going to determine if I pray, I don't pray. My attitude is going to determine whether or not I worship God or don't worship God. My attitude is going to reflect the character of how much I care about ministry and service towards God. My attitude reflects my character. Because it determines how I treat my wife. It determines how I treat my children. And how often do we get up on a Tuesday morning and we're mad at the world for no reason. In our house, there have been times over the last 20 years of us being a family and growing. There's been times that people have come in and announced, I'm about to have a bad day. I'm like, then go back in the other room because I don't want to have a bad day. Others don't announce it. They just determine by their behavior on a daily basis of whether or not their attitude is good or bad. Have you ever been around somebody that no matter what is happening, negative words come out of their mouth? And the longer you're around negative, I was going to say Nancy, but they're, may be a really nice Nancy in here, and you don't want to downgrade that Nancy. But that's what we call, right? Negative Nellie? Nellie. There's not too many Nellies these days. I know one. She was a really nice lady. But we have this negative connotation, and no matter what, we start spinning it in a negative way, and that attitude starts 
infiltrating other people's lives and we start moving in this direction and going, you don't have to eat from that tree. Adam and Eve had a choice. They chose wrong. Esau had a choice. He chose wrong. There was a man, a rich man, who had a conversation with Jesus in Matthew chapter 19. This rich man comes to Jesus and says, how do I get to heaven? How do I go and inherit eternal life? And Jesus goes, hey, you got to keep the commandments. You know, that, you know, don't commit adultery, you know, love the Lord, you know, all these things. And the guy goes, hey, I've done all of those things. I, I got those things down. And Jesus goes, well, then if you really want it, then sell everything you got. And give it to the poor and come follow me. And the Bible says this rich man hung his head, walked away, saddened because he had a lot of money. Some people will preach and say, well, he was sad because he had to get rid of all the money and he did and he followed the Lord. Well, I know nowhere in the Bible when you follow the Lord that you follow Jesus with sadness in your heart. Never met one person who said, I have followed Jesus to the ends of the earth and I hated it the whole way. Jesus loves you. And there is joy when you find Jesus in and through your life. See, this rich man had a choice to make. The choice I see made that makes it the saddest is the reality that he wanted to follow Jesus, but he couldn't stop following his money. See, his money brought him comfort. That stew brought Esau comfort. That fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil brought comfort to Adam and Eve in a way that it should have never brought. Them. The Bible tells us in John chapter 3, verse 19, these are Jesus' words. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it, for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. There is a choice between good and evil. There is a choice between God and this world. There is a choice between the light of God's holy word and the darkness of Satan's lies. Untrue. The Bible tells us in Joshua chapter 24, verse 13, I gave you the land you had not worked on, and I gave you towns you did not build. The towns where you are now living, I gave you vineyards and olive groves for food, though you did not plant them. I want us to think for a moment of how our world has expanded from this time that, Jesus, um, that, that Joshua is writing this, that the time that God is speaking this, and thinking about where we are today, that God has given us the air to breathe, the great country to live in, the ability to worship Him in spirit and in truth. For those who have come into to this building, such as myself, that I put no bricks on this building, I put no wood on that. I put no lights in. And yet we come in and we have the ability to worship Him. Not something that I had done, but things that He had led other people to do. And here we sit and we say, there's more to life, there's more to God than this building. But it reads in verse 14, So fear the Lord. And serve him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worship when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and the, in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve 
the Lord. Then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? Will it be your car? Will it be your family? Will you, will you serve your job? Will you serve the internet? Will you serve your phone? Will you serve the TV? Will you serve your addiction? What is it in your life that if you're not going to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, to follow Him on a daily basis and to grow, to add all of those things to, to your faith, to become more godly, to become more knowledgeable, to become more patient, to be more endurant, to be these things, to love, to honor each other, if you're not going to choose to serve God, then who are you choosing? Joshua writes, but for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. The people replied, we would never abandon the Lord and serve other gods. They go on down in verse 21 at the very bottom and it says, But the people answered Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Joshua said, You are a witness to your own decision. You have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, they replied, We are witnesses to what we have said. All right then, Joshua said, Destroy the idols among you and turn your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. This morning, what I choose, what I choose to do today determines who I will be tomorrow. Every single day I am becoming who I'm going to be. And I get to choose who it is that I serve. And oftentimes in American society, we've come to the place of consumerism. I'm going to consume and, and go here for a while and see what's happening. And, and I'm going to consume that. And until I don't get what I'm after, I'm just going to go to something else. We make decisions based on what one or two people have said to us where they just Stop going to church altogether because somebody said something wrong. And should they have? No, they shouldn't have. But I am going to tell you from this day, from the time that I was a kid, and I made the determination that I was going to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I've been in some different churches growing up that they were mean to me. And make no mistake about it, my determination on following Jesus Christ is not bent on what someone else has done to me. They will never stop me from worshiping Jesus Christ. It's a choice I get to make. And there is nothing and no one going to ever Stop me from wanting to that desire to honor God in everyday life. See, what I choose today determines who I will be tomorrow. Who will you serve? What attitude will you have? What choice will you make next? See, this morning I've asked Sarah if she would to, to play the piano. And at this moment, as she comes forward to, to play a song, I want you to answer those questions to yourself. Who will you serve today? What attitude will you have? See, attitude is a reflection of character. And if you consistently go around with a bad attitude, it is demonstrative of your character. Choose you this day to serve the Lord. Joshua said it. 
Deuteronomy, it said that you have a choice. A choice on who you're going to serve. As every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Does my family, my friends recognize the authenticity of my spirituality? Do I need to reflect upon my attitude? How is my choice in faith and trusting God? What about forgiveness? Am I choosing wisely to pray to God on a daily basis? What about my choice to read His Holy Word? All eyes are closed. It's a moment to reflect upon who you are as a human being. Maybe right now, one of the things I've said, whether it's attitude or faith or trust or forgiveness or prayer, Bible reading, maybe one of those are impactful to you and you say, I need to give these over to God. You can raise your hand. You can stand. You can stand and sit back down. You can come to the altar. See, it's not about what everybody else has seen. It's not about me as a pastor standing here in front of you. It is about your walk with God. Maybe you've not chosen to be a follower of Jesus Christ yet. Maybe you're living out your life. You're saying, I'm still trying to figure out more. I'm still trying to get better. I'm still trying to do the right thing. There's no chance of that ever happening. Joshua said it, and I say it to you today. Choose today to be a follower of Jesus Christ. It's as simple as giving your life over to God. Maybe you need to choose to be more kind. Maybe today you've not been baptized yet and you say, hey, it's a simple task, but I haven't done it yet. Maybe today you make that determination to say, hey, it's time for me to be that follower of Jesus Christ. I've asked him in my heart. That's the next step. Maybe you're choosing to avoid ministry because you've done it for so long. It's time for somebody else. There is no time for somebody else. The time is for you. The time is for me. Maybe your choice to be faithful. Faithful to your spouse. Faithful to your family. Faithful to God. Maybe your choice is honesty, love. Maybe today you are looking and saying, my priorities have gotten all out of whack and Jesus Christ is definitely not first. As this song is just being played, I encourage you, if there is something that God is speaking to you in this very moment, if there is something in your life that you know, I need to hand this over to God, I need to make better choices in this matter, we don't need to know the choice that it needs to be, but if you would, just slip your hand up in the air and say, I want you to pray for me in this very moment. I see those hands, I see those hands. You can put those hands back down, yes. May we choose wisely what we do. And I'm going to ask every single one of you to stand to your feet as I pray over you. And maybe you didn't raise your hand. And as this song continues playing, Lord, I pray for each and every person here within the sound of my voice. Whatever struggles or circumstances they have in their life, that, Lord, they would truly trust in you Lord, sometimes our attitude because of the way life is and we forget that Satan has a purpose and his purpose is solely to kill, to steal, and destroy our life. He'll do anything possible, Lord, to keep us out of a relationship with you. 
So Lord, I ask that you would help each and every person who raised their hand on whatever the choice is that, that they're thinking of. Maybe it's one, maybe it's two, maybe it's three things. Lord, whatever it is that they would choose to follow you, and Lord, if they don't know what that path is, that they would find a godly man, a godly woman to help them to, to look into your word, to pray. Lord, for those who, who maybe think they have it all together, and Lord, maybe they do in the world's eyes. May we never lose the desire to get closer to you. Lord, help me to have that desire to want you more and more every day. Lord, help us to desire you above everything this world has to offer. Lord, help us to give our heart and our soul and our mind and our strength to you. Lord, let us reflect upon the choices we make. And as we walk out these doors, may you bless each and every one here today. Lord, may you protect them and may your face shine and smile upon them. And Lord, may you be gracious to them. And Lord, may you show your favor and give your peace to each and every one. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. And you are dismissed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this day.